Acoustic Software Adventures. Today we're going to be setting up a new software tank. Yes! For beginners. First of all, um, what um, you might not be able to see everything on the table, but I'll try and explain all the equipment that we need. We need a 10 gallon tank. You can find this 10 gallon tank at Petco. Petco, they normally have like a, a sale, like a dollar per gallon. I don't know when they do it, but you need to look out on their website. They normally have like a dollar per gallon for any tank that you want. I think it's from 10 gallons to about 75 gallons. So this is a 10 gallon tank. What next that we need is we need a sand. I've already raised the sand. The sand that I got is, is Aragonite from Carib Sea. If you can see it clearly over there, I had to take it out of the um, bag and I had to rinse it as the instruction says over there. Okay, and then we need a rock. Okay, most um, LFSs and um, pet store they'll be sell they'll sell this rock. But make sure you get this rock. Don't get a fresh water rock. You need to make sure you get a salt water rock. Okay, this is what a salt water rock looks like. Okay, speaking of rock, we have two types of rocks. You have a dry rock. This is a dry rock, and then you have a light rock. What is a live rock? So a live rock is a rock that has already been cultured, which means it's been in a saltwater um, environment and it has bacteria all over it. The disadvantage of having a live rock is you might have some critters, okay, unwanted pests uh, introduced into your tank. Pests like you might have some unwanted crabs, unwanted um, bristol worms, or aptasia. So it's always best to go with, you know, go with the the, with the dry rock, but an, an advantage with the live, live rock is the live rock speeds the recycling process. But you know, there are pros and cons, okay? But I prefer to use a dry rock so that I don't have any critters in my tank, okay? Next thing that you need is you need a solution for nitrifying bacteria, okay? This is for up to 30 gallons. We're just going to use 10 gallons worth of it so that you can cycle and add the nitrifying bacteria into the tank. This is what it looks like. And you can get this via Spira at Amazon, okay? Next but not the least is, um, we have something called Prime. What is Prime used for? So this agent is used for taking out chlorine out of your tap water, you're gonna use tap water for salt water. Most people use RODI unit, whereby it removes all the elements and the chlorine from the our main source of the, um, water supply. Well, I use tap water and I've been very, very successful. So this is where you're going to use Prime. You can find it on Amazon as well. And then another thing that we normally use is we use the salt. Okay, so I use instant ocean salt. Remember we used the 10-gallon tank? This stage is for 10 gallons, okay? So we're going to mix this in the water. I've already done that already. Mix some in the two buckets of um, five-gallon water and then you stir it up. It's very, very easy, it's nothing complicated. And then you're gonna use something called an hydrometer. So what an hydrometer does is it me measures the, the salinity and the gravity of, um, of the salt in the tank. So the recommended value is 1.025, which is equivalent to 35 ppt. So it has to be 1.025 for a rig tank. If you want only salt, um, fresh, um, sorry about that. If you only want fish only tank, you can, the, it ranges, it lowers, is from 1.020 for fish only. But for reef, for your reef to thrive well, you have to be in the ranges of 1.024 to 1.026. I've seen that, but the best is to aim for 1.025. Okay? So this is called an hydrometer. This is what we used to use in the olden days. Most people hated that, it's from Instant Ocean. We have something called an inkometer, okay? What that does is it helps you, it's the same thing, you check the salinity, okay? And then you can, it's, it's called a refractometer, sorry. What it does is it helps you, it does the same thing, this gives you an accurate measure of the salinity in the water. So what you need to do is you just get this, you take a sample of water, the salt water that you mix, drop it in here, and peek through it like a pilot and then you can see the calibrations in there. Notice that sometimes the calibration can be wonky, so you have the calibration fluid that you use to maintain it. 
So this is a refractometer. Okay, remember that refractometer, and this is a hydrometer. So people complain, oh, I don't like this, this doesn't work, this is old school. I normally use them, they're quite close to each other. So hydrometer versus refractometer. Most people use refractometer, and there are other sources they can use as well, okay? Next, what you need is gonna be a light. We need a light for the tank. Okay, this light that I have over here is Coral Light. Okay, it's for 20 gallons. Um, you have to make sure that you get the one suited for the tank. Unfortunately, I got 20 gallons, which is no big deal. But you can find the right light in Amazon or if you go to the LFS, we have AI Prime and some other brands out there that you can go ahead and use. Okay. So, last but not the least, we have two of the two last equipments left. We need a heater. Okay, so you need a 50 watt heater. When you're getting your heater, the, the description tells you the size that the heater um, maintains. So this little heater over here, if you look at it, it's a small heater. I wrapped it up, okay? This is what it looks like, the heater, okay? So it's only for 10 gallons, okay? If you go to the pet store, the box will tell you the size that it's um, meant for. So this one, I got this one at um, Petco and as well as you can see it at um, Walmart as well. And some LFSs to your fish store will have them as well. Okay, so this is the heater. You need a heater. The next thing you need is a filter. A hand on back filter. Okay, you don't need a sun for a 10 gallon tank. I think that's a waste of time and energy. Okay, just get a hand on back filter. Okay, you can get any brand from Aqua Clear or any ones that you like. You can find this at Petco as well. So one thing I'll say about the filter is, remember this is a 10 gallon tank? The, what I would recommend is get a filter that is has more power or more, um, it, 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 um, it works, is more efficient. So if I'm using this 10 gallon tank, I will get a filter for like the size of a 30 gallon. That way it would make the tank cleaner, okay, be more efficient to a drink the water. So if you get 10 gallons with it, 10 gallons filter versus 10 gallons tank, it's still gonna work, but I've seen it whereby if you increase the um, intensity of the pump, uh, of the filter, sorry, to um, you make it like 30 gallons plus, because the difference is you're doing 20 gallons extra cleaning, okay, which will make your tank cleaner, okay? So this is the hang on back filter. We're gonna go ahead and put a filter plus in there to catch all the debris, all the dirt, and all the yuck, yuck, yucky stuff out of there. Last but not the least is air circulation. Okay, I got this joker at Petco as well. So you need to have surface area agitation on the tank, okay? So you don't want it to be stale, okay? Because fish, they need, once that surface agitation is enabled, it brings, it oxygenates the tank. So the fish won't die, they won't suffocate. So you need to have this joker, okay? You can get it at Petco, I got this at Petco, or you can get it at Amazon as well. So you can just stick it to the side, and then you're good to go. Okay, um, so what we're gonna do right now, since I've showed you all the equipment that we need, we're just gonna go ahead and show you how to set up the tank, okay? And then boom, the filter fell down. Awesome, so now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go ahead and start off from the beginning how to set up the tank. So I have a tank on tank. All I'm gonna do is remember the carib sea sand that we need. Make sure you wash it, don't wash it with soap. Put it underneath the faucet, let it drain until the water is clear. You might have like five drains, okay, until you see the water is clear. Don't put soap when washing the sand, okay? Notice some, even any aquarium, when you maintain your, um, your tank, don't use any detergent or soap. It's not good, just use, a uh, Clean um, a dry cloth with a, a, with a, a dampened dry cloth with water, water and then just wipe it around. So now what I'm going to do is first things first, we need da, 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 da. I love the Zelda theme da, 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 da. when you get the keys or something. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pour the sand in into the tank. So you can all see that this is the way you get excited. Yes, I'm getting excited. I'm building my new tank. Hoorah! Okay, let's do this. Okay, so I have that. 
I have all the sand in there, I still have some of the sand in there, so I'm going to try to scrape as much out of it. Okay. Once I do that, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I level the sand. So you can see I'm using my hand to level the sand. Nice and good. Most people say uh, it's best to put the rock in. I'm a bit clumsy. I don't like putting the rock in because I can break the base of the tank. So it's best to have a foundation. Put the sand in first and then place the rock in by pressing it gently to make sure it sits properly. So we have the sand in here. Okay. The next thing we need to do is the rock. The rock. Okay. So you can be creative. Okay. You can break the rock. You can use a chisel. Break the rock and then um, glue it together with um, like a with cement or some gluing agent. I don't know if gorilla works. I've heard people say oh, they'll be successful with gorilla. Gorilla glue. Well, I like the shape. Okay, I'm not going to break this because it's very porous. You can see holes in there. And this tank is, a, is going to be for small fish, a nano fish. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and place this in the middle. Okay, I like my, you see how I'm pressing it down? So it's sturdy. Okay, and the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put the heater. So it depends on where you put the heater. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is. If you notice the background of the tank, I painted it black. The main reason I painted it black is because of the wires. Nobody wants to see all that messy, tiny wires at the back. And as well as for the fish as well, it makes them, um, um, it makes them, um, um, it accommodates them easily in the tank. So nothing's going to fight in them. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to put the heater. I don't know what happened to my suction, but it's no big deal. I'm just going to go ahead and drop the heater in there, okay? And then you should have like a suction. I don't know how to mean, I've had a small heater. So you just put it in there, it's fine, no big deal. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and put your circulation pump, okay? So with the circulation pump, you can see that you can rotate it up and down. I like to tilt mine to the top, facing up so that you can point to the surface of the water. So I'm just going to put this joker over here. Yeah, on this side and tilt it up and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to find our hand, our hand on back filter that fell on the floor so this is the hand on back filter so all you have to do is easy peasy just put it in there okay and then you need a filter plus so you can get this filter plus from Petco or any store okay so I'm going to go ahead and I said filter floss, I mean, um, um, it's like cotton, it's, um, it's a, um, what do you call it again? I said filter floss, filter floss is used for my teeth. <laughs> um, this cotton is the filter, filter, filtering medium, so you don't need to use that much, okay, because it's a small hang on back filter, so you're going to use this media, the cotton filter, okay, put it in there, it's okay, you can see that that came off because there's no water here. So we're going to put that in there gently, okay, we have that. The next thing that you need to do is the water. A trick of adding water into the tank is you can put like a small bowl and then you can use your bucket and just make sure that the water drips into the small bowl in there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use one of the bags that I use for the instant ocean. This is for the big bowl, it's 50 gallons. All you need to do is just place it in your tank, cover it, you can move the filter up a little bit, and then I'm just going to go ahead, so I don't make a mess of it, I'm just going to go ahead and just pour a little bit of it over here, nice and steady, and then, uh, I didn't have my work out this morning, help me, uh, okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and pour it gently, you can see where I'm pouring it in there, Gently into the tank. Okay. Isn't that exciting? Look at that. Note that we've not plugged anything yet. We just added the water. Okay. So this is a five gallon bucket. So I'm adding it gently. Gently. And then I'm going to get the next bucket. Make sure I take a little bit of water out so I don't make a mess. I didn't have my walk out 
this morning. This is my water. Okay, it's filling here. Add in the water. Looks nice and steady. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do some press-ups to pull, pick the third second bucket up. And then you're gonna pull it gently. Pull it up. But hold on. Okay, so you see nice and gently. Okay. Lovely. Lovely chocolate. Okay, you see that? Okay. So we have that. Awesome. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this off. And then we're gonna place this joker. Make sure you have a towel nearby. Place this joker wherever you want to place it, make it neat and tidy, put it on the water. You need to pull. Okay. And then time for us to do what? Plug. Um, time for us to plug everything. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure because there's water in here. I'm gonna put my circulation pump in here. Make sure it's fixed. Make sure that joke is fixed. Okay. Add that joke in there. So we have electricity, you have to be very, very careful. Make sure you wipe your hands. Okay, and then let's work on pop it down, plug everything. That, that, and, and that's it. So what you're gonna do, we have the pump separated. I have the cover somewhere. The last thing that you need is we have this you can see that the tank is not clean yet, but which is no big deal. Um, that's what the cutting stuff is going to do, the um, poly filter, whatever it's called, the poly filter here. Boom! Poly filter is going to um, trap all the dirt in there, filter the tank, make it clean, okay? Some people can add something called um, Clarity, is by CKM. You can add it to make sure that the water clears up, but I'm just going to leave it like this. And then what I'm gonna do is, remember we spoke about adding the nitrifying bacteria? I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna add the nitrifying bacteria. I'm just gonna put one. Normally you're supposed to empty the whole bottle. You empty the whole bottle for 30 gallons. I'm just gonna put two drops in there. Okay, and then my fish are excited at the back, okay? So once you have that in there, I'm sure most of you are like, why didn't you put the lights on, Darren? No, you don't add the lights on. You, you only switch on the lights. The main reason you don't put the lights on is because you're going to have algae grow on your tank. So you make sure during the cycling process, the cycling process takes at least three weeks, okay? So you can move this wherever you want to move it to, to the right hand side. Put your light in here, but don't switch it on, okay? Don't switch it on at all because remember what I said because you don't want algae in your tank, okay? So we're just gonna leave, it's not gonna fall off, but well, hopefully it's gonna stay. Okay, so I have the light situated. That's if I get it on the right. Okay, perfect. So remember, don't switch the light on, okay? You only, after the tank has cycled, okay, how do you know the tank is cycled? The only time we know when the tank is cycled is it takes at least three weeks, okay, for it to cycle. And then this is what we're gonna use. We're gonna use this API test kit to test for nitrate, ammonia, and as well as nitrite and pH to make sure everything is in range. Um, this tells you what colors are good, you know, like, like it tells you you're good to go to add fish. So there's a trick that I'm gonna show you Remember I added this nitrifying bacteria in there? We have the bacteria in there, but what's the bacteria going to eat? So most people do this. I normally go to the store and I get silver slides, okay? Or you can get raw shrimp. I'm just going to go ahead and grab the silver slide. You can see the silver slide in here. All I need to do is just break it up a little bit, drop it in there. That will make the, that will feed the, the nitrifying bacteria. And this is a nitrifying bacteria, we have something to eat, and then we cycle the process. Um, once you've done that, you need to make sure that you have a lid. I'll go ahead and have a lid. In salt water, 
um, um, aquarium, always make sure you have a lid. Even fresh too. You know, the reason you want to have a lid is because you don't want the fish to <coughs> jump out, like find, finding Nemo. You know, you, that section whereby they were running up and down trying to escape when they got caught in the dentist. So some of the fish, they like to jump, they're jumpers. So you need to make sure you put a cover so you don't have any casualties. Okay, so once we have this going, you can see that we have the tank going, everything's good to go. This is a time whereby you have to meditate. Okay, it's a long process, three weeks. For a guy like me, what am I going to do in the next three weeks? I'll be playing tennis, I'll be playing pickleball, enjoying myself, but I'll be watching the tank. You know, but for other people, you can watch Netflix, you know, just to make time pass by. Don't rush it. You need to be patient. It needs to cycle for three weeks. You can't put fish in here. It has to cycle. Once the three week um, demarcation is reached, we're going to use this test kit. And then I'm going to show you how in the next video how we're going to test it to see when we're ready for fish. And hopefully, we can add corals in there. So I think we've we'll come to the end of this session and I hope you find it very educative. Please subscribe. Boom, 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 boom. And this is Dari from Daristic Saltwater Adventures. See you next time. Peace.